Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Welcome to Business Ninjas. I'm here with Shara Simmons at SSC. Hey, Shara, how's it going? Hey, Andy, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm excited for our conversation here today. Me too. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Well, tell me about SSC. Let's start there. Sure. So SSC Digital was established over 10 years ago, and we are basically um, lead generation ninjas. And what that means is that we basically focus on the hunt of the sale on actually identifying potential prospects that meet our clients' criteria. And we do everything from A to Z to build the list, to write the content, the outreach content, to reach out to them and answer their questions, connect into our clients' sales team's calendars. We schedule the calls and we also send confirmations, reschedule any potential no-shows. So soup to nuts so that our clients can focus on pitching and closing and we can focus on gen, you know, continuously bringing and generating new leads. That's so fascinating. I love this part of the market. And I think that uh, uh, it sounds like you're the gas in the car, right? So you're the growth engine um, that any business needs. And so, so talk to me a little bit about that. So a company comes to you and they say, we need to grow. Sure, how, yeah. we need to grow. How do we grow? Tell me how you... Sure. Well, it's actually really interesting that you say that because we like to um, identify ourselves as growth accelerators. And that's really where we excel. Um, You know, we start with companies wherever market they are located. So we work with companies across the globe. Our focus is on clients that are, you know, in the B2B sector that are only targeting businesses. And we have very different, you know, types of, of clients in many different stages. So we have certain clients, for example, that have been targeting a specific market, are past proof of concept, and are just really looking to grow into other markets or expand into their current market. And so we start with them and we help them grow. Many of our clients start off, the CEO is the one, you know, taking and pitching and, and, you know, taking the the sales calls. Um, And then we help grow by generating revenue um, and, you know, expand their company into having, you know, 20, 30 salespeople that start taking the calls. So we have many different types of clients um, in many different sectors, many different sizes. Uh, the goal is that they're already kind of past pr- proof of concept. They have maybe one or two case studies, and then they're really looking to blow it out. But then we also have very large clients that have, you know, 20 to 30 SDRs that we can support with various services that we offer as well. So when somebody says I need to grow and they've got proof of concept and they know that they need to accelerate their business, how do you deploy a team? What is the team structure? How do you uh, tactically implement a solution for them? Sure. So I think this is what really, um, I guess, how we differ from other companies that do this is that we, we have found in the last 10 years that it doesn't really work to put one SDR, um, you know, connected to each client and servicing each client because that SDR, just like as we are human, we have great, you know, skills that we're really great at and we have skills that we're not great at. We also only have a certain work hour capacity that we can manage. And what we find is that it takes a village, just like it does to to raise a family. It takes a village to also grow a company and, and generate those leads. And so what I mean by that is that it takes experts in several different areas that one human, you know, couldn't potentially have. So I could be great at, you know, pitching and I could be great at, um, you know, writing, but I might not be great at, you know, identifying companies and building a list and data analysis and data science. That might not be my strength. And the same thing with us, that's what we found is that we have identified that you need many different people and many different departments and many different skill sets in order to do this and to have a healthy flow of leads coming in. So the way that we do that is we have um, several teams. We start off with really identifying our clients' strategic advantages, what really sets them apart, but really specifically, what is the pain point that they are solving 
um, for their target audience. And then we hand that to our content team. So we have a team of writers that only specialize in writing outbound outreach. So what does that mean? You know, with all the data that we've had, we've sent millions and millions of emails and LinkedIn messages at this point. We know based on who we're targeting and we have the data to support us, what kind of tone works really well with this kind of audience and this kind of industry? Should we be humorous? Should we be serious? We know exactly how short the email should be. What are the keywords that we should be using? So that our content team specializes in and writes the email sequences and LinkedIn messages according to who we're targeting, according to our data, and according to what we have seen works really well. Then we have our data research team, which is really a list of data analysts that build a list on a daily basis. And we provide what's called a master list to our clients. So we have full transparency and they can really see every single lead and every single data point. And it's growing Monday through Friday. So once we identify their ICP, from there, we build a list of companies that meet that ICP, the list of stakeholders and decision makers within that company. And that's all run by our data team. And that's all they do is focus on that data, qualify the data, make sure that the emails are valid, make sure the LinkedIn profile is valid, make sure that person is still at the company. That's a whole service as well that we provide, but just, just our data services. Um, and then in addition, we have our email deliverability team. Whenever you're sending cold emails, and I know you know this very well, Andy, when you're sending cold emails, many, many times when you send high volume, it can go towards spam. And what does that mean? It means that your emails are not gonna be read. It means that your domains can be burned. And so we have a whole team that's focused on the whole email deliverability. And this is happening on a daily basis. So they are checking every single domain. We'll never use our client's main domain. We always set up alternate domains um, to protect the health of the main domain. But we have a whole warm up process. We have a whole email deliverability process where we're checking to ensure that the domains are landing in the inbox, that we have a high open rate and a low bounce rate. And that's our whole email deliverability team that's doing that on a daily basis. And they have a lot of kind of proactive and reactive strategies based on what is happening with those domains. Then we have our email responder team, which we're actually you know, changing to just our responder team because they're answering both LinkedIn um, and email. And this is very similar to an SDR role. And that now that we're sending out the emails and the LinkedIn messages, we're getting a lot of replies. Many of them could be a question. Many of them could be, oh, you know, I just started in my position, contact me in three months. Or another one could say, for example, I'm not the right decision maker. So they are trained in how to reply to these prospects, but in addition, how to follow up and make sure we always say that no lead gets left behind. Now, the way that we you know, built the company, because we target all across the globe, many, many geos, they work on shifts. So again, just like one person can't be awake 24 hours, we have a team that's able to answer these emails and answer them while they're warm, while they're hot, as we call them, as they're coming in, and really make sure to follow up and, and no lead gets left behind, send confirmations to hopefully reduce the no-shows to ensure that we have as many calls that our clients are talking to the right people and they're coming to the call. Um, and then if they aren't, which does happen in this industry, that there's a percentage that, you know, they don't come because their meeting ran late, their kid had to go to the hospital, whatever it is, there's things that happen, we're human, and we reschedule those calls. So basically, uh, our clients just needs to see the thread, we forward them the thread of the email, they're able to just focus on pitching and closing, because our team manages the whole communication with the prospect. And then lastly, we have our client services team with our analytics team. And I bring them hand in hand because this is a big part of our um, secret sauce is our strategy and optimization. And so every week we have a very in-depth report that we provide to each of our clients that enables them to see every step of the funnel, every subject line. We do a tremendous amount of A-B testing. We're able to see what the open rate is, the reply rate is, the conversion rate. In addition, we also show every single reply so we can see why are people saying yes? Why are people saying no? And this is a really important factor because we can learn a lot from it. If a prospect, many prospects are saying no because they don't have budget, well, maybe we're targeting companies that are too small. And then lastly, I'll just mention that we optimize towards the sale. So what does that mean? Every week we review with our clients, how did this call go? Is it closing? Is it moving towards a close? Yes, why? It was the right decision maker. It was the right industry. It was the right company size. And we send that back to our data research team and we tell them, hey guys, this was a really good one. 
find more like them and vice versa. So our goal is, as you mentioned earlier, growth. It's not just about getting calls and sending leads. It's about managing the full cycle for our clients. And it's about growing their companies by, you know, generating a lot of revenue for them. Love that. that that's a complete solution. Um, you mentioned a couple of terms there. I just want to clarify. One is ICP, ideal customer profile, right? So Correct. knowing who your customer is and that buyer persona so that you can speak intelligently to them and speak their language. And then also SDR, sales development rep. And what's interesting about that is that I see this all the time is that sales teams oftentimes, especially early sales teams and companies that have not hit scale yet, but they want to, is that they'll have their salesperson do the research and find the contacts themselves and do non-closing activities, right? Um, tell me a little bit about how, you know, I'm sure you come across this when a, a customer says, I want to grow. And you ask them a little bit about their sales process and you find out that they've got a sales guy who is doing the research. They're sending out the emails themselves. They're doing all the SDR work and all this really labor intensive kind of work that is not closing business. And then they're wondering why they're not closing business. How do you take a client like that and get them on the rails to growth and, and put them into your program? Yeah, well, that happens quite often. And in addition, one of the other things we see a lot is clients that have worked with other outsourced teams and have not had success and have had a bad experience. So both of these, I would say, experiences we we deal with quite often. Um, first of all, I think a big component is that, like I said earlier, one person and usually one SDR does not have the know-how, the skill set, or the time to really do it the way it needs to be done. Now, it doesn't mean that it can convert and you could be getting a few calls a week and that could be great, but we take that and we put that on steroids. That's basically what we do. So we take that function, we separate it out to many different people that are experts in each area. We have very high volume. So again, you know, for, from our perspective, typically on our, on our main package, we're sending between 180 to 300 new prospects a day. So it's very, very high volume. It's not possible for one person to really build that list and qualify that list and verify that list. And so that's why it takes a whole team and teams of people to do this. And, and in essence, what we do also is many times, I mean, you know, there's many, many times when it is actually converting to some degree and they're getting and they're generating calls and the calls are either just not converting or the calls are converting, but it's just not enough volume. We're really big believers in partnering with our clients and understanding what has worked for them, for them as well. So we take their learnings and understand, okay, what has worked for you? What has not worked for you? And in addition to the ICP, the ideal customer profile, that's a really important component here because many times our clients are targeting, I wouldn't say the wrong targets, but they're not aware of maybe potentially other industries or titles that we can show them, listen, we've had similar campaigns. And when we tweaked it and targeted this persona, or when we focused on this industry, it really skyrocketed. And sometimes it just takes a little bit of optimization and strategy. And I would say the benefit is that because we've run so many campaigns and we've sent so many messages, we have already done the testing and learning that it would take the SDR person years to get to. So we have the data of what works, what doesn't work, whether it's in the messaging, whether it's in the targeting, um, whether it's in the strategy, that we combine together to help our clients, which is why, you know, we generate calls pretty quickly for our clients. So once we start working within a few weeks, we're already getting them calls and it's pretty fast. We also launch pretty fast because we have a really good strategy in place for our onboarding. So the benefit of, of you know, the experience and the data that we're able to give so that they can save money on the testing and learning and have you know, take that one SDR and put them on steroids and leverage the learnings and the positive aspects of their previous campaigns that have worked, plus leverage our experience is what really makes it successful. And what's interesting also is that, you know, compared to other media, so if you're building an ad campaign on AdWords or Facebook ads or LinkedIn, you don't really know the output of what you're going to get. Whereas, you know, with your kind of method, it's a much more predictable kind of outcome, or at least you're going to get a lot more data specifically about the people that you're targeting than just seeing click numbers and, you know, obfuscated data that is in ad networks. 
um, so that yeah. you can you can really uh, optimize the campaign to the sale, like you mentioned. Um, there's a really interesting book that long ago, early like I think 2012 or 2013, uh, Aaron Ross came out with that book, Predictable Revenue, that kind of yes. you know really like set this whole sector of the market. Uh, on fire. And um, tell me a little bit about the origin story of SSC. How did you, how did you get started down this path? It's a funny story, actually. Um, I never planned on really building out a company. We now have 65 people in the company and are growing. Um, and I really just planned on it just being me and consulting and taking it a little easier. This is my second company. So after my first exit, I decided I'm just going to be consultants and just help some, you know, clients uh, really reach out and help them with partnerships and business development. And it just evolved um, step by step. And as we had clients come in, they kept asking for more and more and more. And I slowly over the last, you know, 10, 11 years uh, built out this company, but it really was not my intention to, uh, to build out this, you know, again, this is my second company. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take a little bit of a breather, but of course that, that didn't happen, but thank God it's, it's exciting. I would say for me, um, having this be my second company, I, I took a lot, you know, I, I went to the school of hard knocks, right? I always tell my kids like this was um, such a learning experience for me to understand. I, I had certain key, you know, elements that I knew I would never take in an investor. Um, I knew that I wanted to self fund the company. I knew that I wanted to structure it in a specific way. I also was a mom. Um, I am a mom, but I had young kids at the time when I started and for me to have that work-life balance was so important and I wanted to create a position for me where I could work from home. And so what I've built is a remote company um, with, I think, a, a culture that is just so important to me. And that is really like a healthy work-life balance and really valuing my team members and valuing and giving and uh, providing to our communities as well. So one of the things that is really important to me is that everybody loves working at SSC and that we treat our employees uh, with the utmost respect and value everyone's contribution. And so we have a whole remote culture that I think is somewhat unique. You know, the value is that you get to work from home. That could be a plus and minus for many people, but for us, it's a huge plus. But we do a ton of virtual events, whether it be um, our, our wellness program, um, where we have weekly team stretches, where we get away from our computer. We have a personal instructor that's actually doing stretches with us. Um, we have a whole wellness program where every month we have a different topic. Uh, this month in August, it's nutrition. So we're all sharing, uh, you know, interesting articles and discussing nutrition. Uh, we have a, a monthly team building experience where it's really everybody from all different countries getting together, um, competing against one another. We have an SSC store with SSC swag. Uh, there's a lot that, and, and we have something that I'm really proud of, which is our SSC Random Act of Kindness. I'm not sure if you've seen it, Andy, but it's on our website. And for me, the value, especially when we started going through COVID and we realized just how blessed we are to have our jobs, how blessed we are that we can help companies that during COVID really struggled from not having the trade shows and not having those in-person meetings. And our, you know, our service really helped them continue to grow and continue and not shut down. Um, we even transitioned a few of our clients that were very um, event-based clients to virtual events. We really completely transitioned the whole company so that they wouldn't shut down. And, you know, for us giving back to each of our communities, learning each other's cultures is really important. So we launched this random act of kindness where every month one team member um, does some random act of kindness, gives to somebody in need. It could be someone they know, it could be somebody they don't know. Um, and we video it and we share it with the team and we share it with the world and just trying to give back as much as we can. I love right. that. That was, that was a pretty long-winded answer. No, it's fantastic. <laughs> Great to see that kind of insight because, you know, as as you know, uh, happy employees make happy customers and exactly. employees are engaged. They they love what they're doing. They love what they're doing on behalf of your clients. And that all leads to a great client relationship and a uh, great outcome, really good care of your clients. So all that is 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 really germane to... Uh, growing a distributed company, we we experience it ourselves. We we employ those same kind of values and uh, tactics as well with our team, and it's very important. I, it, it's important. near and dear to my heart. So I, I, yeah. I see the the value of that every day. 
Uh, I've seen it with companies I've I've also been part of as well, and uh, it's it's really important to build that company culture um, and 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 maintain it. It's not just you know yeah, kind of sure. the, the living breathing organism. So that's yes. very cool. So let's switch gears and talk a little bit about the business side. Um, sure. Tell me a little bit about how you generate revenue. Sure. I mean, it's pretty simple. We typically have a monthly fee. Um, we recently launched several different packages. So each of the different packages has a different monthly fee, but it starts from $2,000 and can go up to $6,000 a month, depending on what you're looking for. Um, and so, yeah, we basically price it based on the actual service that we're offering. If it's just list building and data, the data side, if it's the full service solution, which includes all of the departments that I mentioned, um, but yeah, that's the range and it's a monthly fee. We also really don't believe in having long-term contracts. I think this is a big part of our culture as well is that I want my team members to wake up and love what they do and want to come to work. I want my clients to feel the same way that they are not stuck, that they are working with us because we're providing value. And so we don't have any long-term contracts. Um, our clients are with us because they're seeing the results and they're happy with the service. Love that. That was so fantastic. Well, sure. This has been really interesting and I appreciate your time here. I'm excited for you and your growth and Thanks, seeing Wendy. the company grow like this. It's really exciting. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. My pleasure. Okay. Right, Kira Simmons from SSC Digital. Thank you so much. Thank you.